this video I'll show you how to make a new radiator swirl pot or cooling system reservoir whatever you want to call it this is the original one as you can see all the paints flaking it's very very rusty um, especially at the tubes so this one's actually junk so I've used this one to take all the dimensions to make a new one these are all the materials that I'll need to make a new one and this is all in aluminium so this is just a, a piece of aluminium pipe in the correct size now this one is um, 9 centimeters in diameter this one's 10 centimeters in diameter so it's a little bit bigger but uh, you won't actually notice I couldn't get the correct size but uh, this is close enough so these, this is just some uh, aluminium plates, this is a 2mm wall thickness, this is a 3mm plate that I cut the shape for covers top and bottom, some aluminium tubes, a piece of 8mm aluminium rod which I've already threaded. And then this is uh, a CNC radiator neck from aluminium and um, this is from torx.co.uk so I've done all of the rough work already I've got everything to size I've tried the rod and I've got some holes in this uh, cylinder now the hard part of these holes is because they have to be angled so you can see this has a specific location and the same on this side as you can see they are uh, 90 degrees from each other uh, the way I did this is I measured everything out on the original one then I mounted it in my vise made sure that everything was on the correct position that it had the correct inclination and then uh, I drilled the holes so I'll quickly mock everything up This is the mock-up, but I'll have to uh, weld it all up with my TIG machine. So I've done some uh, testing on a piece of scrap aluminium. Um, as you can see, some are better than others, but uh, you can see the stack of dimes pattern. So um, this is just some quick practice, but it'll be enough for me to have a go to weld this up. Now uh, we'll start off by welding the radiator neck to the top plate and we'll weld this from the bottom because uh, you won't have any access to it otherwise and then we'll tack in the tubes but before we'll tack in the tubes we're going to uh, put a bead on the outside just so uh, the hose won't slip off then we'll tack these on and then when we have the bead on the outside we'll also have to trim the inside Because as you can see, while it does fit on the outside, we have a little bit of excess on the inside. So we'll mark this out, then remove the excess on the inside. And last thing, we'll have to weld on the rod on the outside. You can see that the original swirl pot also has a bracket on the outside. This is for um, the heater valve. Well, not going to make this uh, at the moment because the original heater valves are no longer available. I have my original one, but it's in pretty bad condition. So um, I might have to look for an alternative and we can make a new bracket if we want to, to mount a new one. So I'll show you all of the little steps we're going to do to make this a complete swirl pot. To be able to put a bead on the end of these pieces of tubing, we'll have to anneal it to make the aluminium a bit softer. So I've put some permanent marker on the end. Now we're going to heat it up with a torch. Um, once it's hot enough, so that the permanent marker burns off then it's uh, about the same temperature that the aluminium has been annealed so we'll heat it up and then we'll let it cool down
This is a cheap tube beater that I bought off of eBay. It's made by uh, a guy named Andrew Mida. Uh, it's fairly simple. Two hardened steel rollers, a little crank and an adjusting screw. Um, it's not very expensive, it's quite cheap actually. Um, this is a beat that I made earlier. This is the one that we still need to do, as you can see. Now this was the first one that I did, so um, I was a little bit too careful, but um, it's quite okay. So um, this is what we're going for, maybe need even a little bit better. So, so we'll start off by just making sure that there's a little bit of oil on the rollers, just not to damage the aluminium. So this is the part that we want to beat, we'll slide it in, tighten the screw. Go ahead and measure the bead to see what we're at at the moment. So this is the one we've done now. This is the other one. Um, they look quite similar, and the bead's quite nice. So I've finished welding up the complete uh, coolant tank. As you can see, this is the one that I made. This is the original one. Um, the welds aren't perfect, it looks like a semi stack of dimes, um, it's not perfect, not by a long shot, but um, it will do what I want and it looks nice. Now um, you can see all the different parts, so the beaded tubes, the threaded rods, uh, it's a bit scratched up but that's because I wasn't too careful with it, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it. I might polish it, but I also might paint it black because I'm not too big of a fan of uh, all the polished parts on a classic car, but uh, I'm not quite sure. Now, there's one thing that's bothering me a little bit, and that uh, I welded the fill neck on the inside, so I've welded the fill neck to the top plate before I weld the top plate to the rest of the tank, and um, well, because all the welds are exposed on the complete uh, Part, except for the top um, it looks like it's not very cohesive so I'm going to run uh, a well bead around the filler neck just to tie it in with uh, the rest I finished welding the bead around the top and uh, I think that this ties it right in with the rest so um, all the beads are exposed uh, most of the welds look quite good um, they're not perfect, not by any means, because this is the first project in aluminium that I've done. So this is the first thing that I've uh, welded with uh, my TIG in aluminium. So I'm quite pleased with it. Um, it looks nice. I'll turn it around. I've already filled it with water to test it and uh, nothing leaks. So. It's quite good. So now I only have to decide what I want to do with it. Do I want to uh, sand it and polish it? Or I'm going to completely paint it black um, like the original one. So I'll show the original one for good measure. This is what it looks like. Um, it was black but um, as you can see there's really a lot of rust. So this is it, um, I'll show you what the finished product will look like once I've decided 
if I want to paint it or polish it. This is the uh, coolant expansion tank you've seen me make. And I wasn't sure about what finish I wanted, but uh, I uh, tried to polish a piece just to test it. And this is the result, just a quick maybe 15 minute polish on one side. Um, polish it by hand. And the finish isn't perfect, but it looks quite nice. So now I'm going to polish the entire tank and um, if I want to paint it afterwards I can always do that but um, I kind of like the finish so we'll go with that for now. As you can see this finish is quite rough because uh, I wasn't very careful with it and uh, I also used a wire brush to clean it before welding so um, we have quite a few streaks and some scratches. So here's uh, a tub of water with some sandpaper in different grits. Um, I've got 400, 800, 1000 and 1200 so I'm going to uh, use these to uh, completely sand this I'm going to start off with the 400 then 800, 1000, 1200 just to get all the scratches out uh, once everything's sanded as smooth as I could get it then we'll polish it by hand so now uh, we'll start off by sanding this with the 400 grit I finished wet sanding the entire tank with a 1200 grit. So as you can see, the tank has a very satin finish. It's very smooth, but um, it is reflecting, but it's very satin. So now we're going to use some autosol polish just to polish it up. This is uh, the regular metal polish, but you also uh, have the uh, special aluminium polish. But this is the one that I have, so this is the one we're going to use. So I've polished everything and um, I've removed most of the polish but my hands were so dirty that I kept making more stains on the polished surface. So uh, I've got a new cloth and I've cleaned my hands now we can polish it off. Now we're not going to get a complete mirror shine with this. Uh, it has a couple of reasons, firstly you have to sand to a higher grid, secondly um, ideally you need machines or a lot of time and you need a, a better polish. And this is a very good polish but it's a little bit coarse for aluminium. Um, so this is the final result, I'm quite happy with it, uh, it could be better but uh, I'm okay with it. I might do the edges with a Dremel and a small polishing bit, but uh, it's quite okay. And then this will look nice, nice in the car. So it, as you can see, it's not a completely mirror finish, but it has quite a lot of reflection, and um, it's quite good. Uh, I didn't think I'd get it like this, and uh, because it was quite rough. We've come to the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making uh, the aluminium cooling tank, it was quite challenging because it's uh, something that I've never done before and uh, working with aluminium is quite a challenge but um, every day is a school day so you learn something and the next thing that you'll make will be a lot better than this one. Uh, I hope you've learned something or that you enjoyed watching it. If you want to read more about this part or something else about my restoration, you could visit my website where there are a lot of blog posts with a lot of explanation and a lot of pictures. You could also subscribe to this YouTube channel so you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. And I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye.